Hi everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. My name is Mike. Welcome to another top 10 mocks of the week video. As usual, I'm choosing my favorite mocks that I have seen last week to land in this top 10 list. This week is gonna be heavy about locations and buildings. I found a lot of cool ones, so I think you're gonna like it. And at the end of the episode, I'm showing your fan creations that you guys are sending to our Brick Vault fan mocks email. Keep sending those, we really appreciate that, and I'm gonna be showing them at the end of the episode. But for now, let's jump into this first mock. As in every episode guys, all those creations and their galleries can be found in the links in the description below. Starting off with number 10 this week, we have the ultimate interiors builder that is Haiki M aka Hexu, coming in hot with his barber shop. We have featured this builder many times already and we kind of skipped him for the last few weeks but he's coming back with a really nice design this time. Well actually his designs are great every time but this is somewhat different because it shows a business not a apartment. He does use some chrome pieces to highlight those chairs, same goes for the mirrors on the wall but I don't really mind this whole scene feels very aesthetic. Even though it looks simplistic he packs the scenes with a lot of details, usually there is some kind of an exterior shot through the window, same goes for this one. As you can see the facade of the building across the street plus a bunch of details like barber's accessories, hair gels and whatnot. I love this checkered classic floor pattern and after looking at this place I think I really need a haircut. Hexu was not stopping with his builds over the course of the last few weeks, he made a small children's room, a bohemian living room and a build for the closet. Overall I would recommend following him on Flickr if you are into such aesthetics. Moving up to number 9 we have Patrick B aka Balbo, for us he's a quite known diorama slash vignette builder especially in the Lord of the Rings lore. Some time ago he made a micro scale hobbiton and a few other things from the Lord of the Rings but this time around he's coming back with the bag end in minifigure scale. Great looking very natural build for this iconic home of Bilbo and consecutively Frodo of course. Very nice landscaping with a bunch of green pieces. The hobbit's home walls are very iconic with those round doors and windows and that's all here. A bunch of other stuff outside that just screams details and I love the whole concept. Some nicely detailed interiors are also included, you can see the pack of dwarves visiting Bilbo from the Hobbit books, there is even Gandalf and a whole lot of accessories inside. As a fan of J.R.R. Tolkien's heritage I do approve this build, great looking stuff. As I mentioned in the intro this week is all about very nice looking buildings and locations. This one here comes from Jonas White aka Gideon, the name is Temple in the Jungles of Celestia. First things first, you can see how great the jungle build is, he's using probably all of the possible plant pieces or leaf pieces that LEGO is providing. It contrasts very well with this ancient temple building. I especially love the trees at the top with this sage green leaves, that is a quite uncommon piece, I'm not sure where it comes from. Those are also used on the palm tree to the right, next to this uh, nice contrasting pink flower or plant. The foliage bed is also very well made using darker pieces for this swampy look. Some yellow flowers to break up the scene, a clear bricks usage for the waterfall and a small river. And overall just looks realistic, something taken from the Indiana Jones movie. That is overall probably one of the best use of brick pieces to recreate stone and connecting them with the jungle pieces to recreate the jungle that I have seen this year or last year even so. Number 7 here is a much smaller build but it comes from no one else but Lego 7. Those are the working dogs, the border collie, the Saint Bernard and the terrier. Lego 7 has a very versatile collection of his builds and those are showing something new from him. He's pretty much the master of showing what he wants with the use of very few pieces. Some custom prints to add some value to his mocks, I always appreciate them. And here we have a very nice looking pack of canines. I especially like the Sardog Terrier with the expression from some Disney movie perhaps, it looks like that. SAR means a search and rescue by the way. The San Bernard dog looks also very nice, it reminds me of those old Donald Duck cartoons. And the Border Collie looks pretty much the same as one that my friend has. Many people suggested in his comments section that he should turn this into the Lego Ideas uh, project. I do concur because having a pack of different breeds of dogs in such uh, quality builds would be a great Ideas project actually. We've had birds before so why not dogs, they are even much more loved and popular for us humans. So maybe go visit Flickr page of Lego 7 and type some good vibes to maybe encourage him to put this on Lego Ideas. Moving up to number 6 and coming back to the big scale building with some medieval touch to it, this is Henjin Quilones and his city of Bandari. The whole build looks excellent, it was built for the Guilds of Historica 5th anniversary challenge as uh, he states in his description. And there is a lore backstory to this build so check it out in the description on his Flickr. The island is called Muamba, it's part of the continent of Historica in the land of Bandari. And basically what it shows is a dragon hatchery overseen by the elves, especially the elf Yoka. The big black dragon 
dragon is a friendly one, his name is Nyeusimoto, I think I spelled this right, and he's overlooking the birth of his hatchling young son. That is some magnificent fantasy building. I love every single bit of it, from the composition of the buildings and the landscape to the mentioned magnificent looking dragon. There is something very creative and special to such types of builds, and I always love to discover them as I go through Flickr, and this one was just a game to find this week, so thank you Henjin for this amazing build. But wait, there is more. Number 5 comes from Ellie Brinsmead. This is called the Volsung Hall and it's actually a collaboration between Ellie and Ben Cosey that they built for the Brickvention 2018. Basically the lower chamber of the Volsung Hall was built by Ben and the upper area with the chambers and the landscape was built by Ellie. It's magnificent that this builder only met at the convention to connect those builds they were building remotely pretty much. The effect is just staggering, there is this wonderful red dragon on the side, I love this build especially. The whole texture for the stone wall is amazing with this very fantasy looking bridge with some uh, water in the middle. A bunch of smaller details like those statues and minifigures placed in strategic places does look like a mix of Lord of the Rings and some other fantasy lores. And I honestly love the fact how connected these are given they are coming from different builders, the whole thing feels very complete. The landscaping at the top is using some very nice uh, builds for those trees in sage green and different other shades of green. There is even a library with some nice columns. Uh, I think those are skeleton or ghost warriors trying to fight the main protagonists. And I believe there is much more backstory to it that I don't know about, but it's always nice to guess and be amazed by the mystery of this build. Awesome stuff and I really hope those guys will work together in the future for more epic builds like that. Alright, as we move up towards the list we have more sci-fi builds uh, for this week actually. This one comes from Peter Maury, there is Horizon Zero Dawn again, uh, one of my favorite games of last year, really amazing one. And this is the Sharpshot Bow from Alloy. If you guys played the game she was using different types of bows to hunt down those uh, mechanical animals and the sharp shot one was one of the most powerful ones. Thanks to the very heavy structure of the bow using a lot of technique pieces and the actual bow string, that's not lego but I don't really mind, this bow actually can fire some projectiles. So yep, it is a working replica in lego of the sharp shot bow from the game. Did I mention it's full size? Yes, it is full size. And he also added a bunch of details that recreate it as it looks in the game. I really love how people pick up this game as the base for their creative process in LEGO building. The game does offer a bunch of amazing assets that can be done in LEGO, so it's great it's living on in the LEGO form beyond the screen of your console. Awesome Peter and I'm looking forward to seeing more from you. Continuing with the sci-fi vibes to number 3, here is your mech of the week. Actually two or even three mechs coming from Mini Grey and this doesn't really have a name, it's just uh, named 8080 with a question mark. So what Mini Grey was doing, he was trying to create a really cool concept for the walker's legs. You can see those walkers, the two-legged one and the four-legged one, really have awesome design for the legs. The Stormtrooper kind of gives it away where he was taking inspiration from, but honestly those look like nothing taken from Star Wars, it's quite an original design. It looks much more Starcrafty, maybe even feels like steampunk, but add to this some excellent photography with those amazing building skills, you have yourself some wonderful mocks. The builds are very poseable, so the legs not only look great but also function very well. He has even built a six-legged version of more of a spider look. Awesome stuff and I'm also really astonished by the quality of photography from Mini Grey. Check out his Flickr page to see what I'm talking about. Alright, moving up to number two, we gotta have a Star Wars build and this is something I was waiting for for a long time. This is the Scarif Citadel from Rogue One by Paul Trash. And I know, I know there have been many many other different Rogue One builds including the dioramas of the Scarif, walkers, X-wings, whatnot, U-wings. But honestly I think this one feels the most aesthetic of them all. It's not crowded, it doesn't feel like a battle going on, it's just a simple day at the Scarif Citadel. Some very nice landscaping showing parts of the jungle, the shores and the water. This industrial imperial design for the pathways and the landing pads. The scale is just perfect, it doesn't feel too big or too small even though the citadel measures over 1.8 meters tall. A lot of amazing photography and even cool details like director Krennic at the very top near the transmission tower. Overall I am not sure how I managed to skip this build before, but I'm glad it's in this week's episode at the high number 2 spot. 
But Mike, what will take number one this week if the Citadel is so awesome? Well, a big massive spaceship, that's the answer. Z Cerberus is taking number one this week with his two amazing ships, like big massive project. Those are called the LL-112 Missile Corvette and the LL-424 Battle Frigate. First thought when I saw this, it looks like something taken from Homeworld, one of my favorite RTS games of all time. It's funny because Jack just mentioned his build last week about his H-17 Moonbase, which I just saw this week and it's pretty excellent, I have to say. But he doesn't stop there, he just got those guys out and the scale is as or even more astonishing. Especially the LL-424 is uh, packing a lot of punch, a lot of cool details and gribbling along the ship. I love the color combo of orange and gray. You can see this massive side cannons and also the hangar bay with some micro scale ships. That looks great, to be honest. A lot of sci fi turrets at the top uh, overlooking this bridge area where the captain resides. And the whole X Wing looking engine section is also pretty awesome. Man, I love this build, and same goes for the missile frigate. It is a bit more sleek design, but seems like the same technology and the same uh, race as per lore of the world goes. This one feels a bit Starcrafty, looks like a battlecruiser maybe from Starcraft, just a bit like the Terran's uh, battleship. You can see the massive missile pods on the sides, some defensive cans on the top and all of the cool stuff that the previous one also had. They even have the names, the LL424 is named the Aura and the missile corvette is named the Harbinger. So yeah, overall it does feel like Starcraft meets Homeworld. Way to go with those builds Z Cerberus and uh, I think you just become one of my favorite space builders of all time. Alright guys, and that's gonna be it for this week's top 10 mocks. I hope you enjoyed this selection. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. We would very much appreciate it. And now, as always, it's time to show off your creations that you guys have sent to our Brick Vault fan mocks email. We love seeing creations from you, so keep sending them. As usual, 5 pictures per mock. Try to use your name towards the file name so it's easier for us to sort. Take the best pictures possible and send them over. So without further ado, thank you so much for watching again. My name is Mike, we'll see you next time and here are your mocks. Cue the music.